This is our practice session on conversions, and with this, I would recommend you trying each one on your own, and then come, you know, hit and pause, trying it, come back, see um, if your work or your answer matches mine. So here we go, number one. The Kentucky Derby is 79,200 inches long. How many miles is that? Well, when we're dealing with conversions, we want to start with what, they're, what we're given. So we're given 79,200 inches, and we want to go to miles, so we want our final answer to be in miles, but we've got to figure out how to get there. I don't know how many inches are in a mile, but I know that there are 12 inches in one foot. And remember, we want inches on the top, inches on the bottom. They'll cancel out top to bottom. Well, now that I have feet, I know there are 5,280 feet in one mile. So when I do that, now my feet cancel out, right? Just the labels. And now my label is in miles, which is what I want. So I'm ready to do math. So I'm going to take my 79,200, divide it by 12 because it's in the denominator, and then divide by 5,280 because it is also in the denominator. When I divide by those numbers, I end up with 1.25 miles. Number two, how long will it take you to count to 1 million if it takes you one second to count each number? Now, that starts out pretty easy, right? We're like, well, obviously, 1 million, counting to a million, it took you a million seconds. Well, how long is a million seconds, really? Well, I know that 60 seconds is one minute. That makes my seconds go away. Well, that's not. That's still going to be pretty big. And I know there are 60 minutes in an hour. Well, I feel like that's still going to be pretty big. And I know there are 24 hours in one day. So let's, let's stop there after we cancel out our labels, and let's see what we have. All of these numbers, 60, 60, and 24 in the denominator, so each one will be divided. So 1 million divided by 60, divided by 60, divided by 24, and I'm going to end up with 11.57 days. So if you count nonstop for 11 and a half days at one second per number, you will get to 1 million. Number three, the adult human body has at least 160 fluid ounces of blood on average. How many pints is this? Well, we're given 160 ounces. And if you look at your conversion chart, ounces do not go to, pound, to pints. Eight ounces is one cup. Ounces on the top cancels out with ounces on the bottom, right? With opposite spots. Well, then you know that um, two cups is one pint. So, cups, cups, I'm now left with pints. So 160 divided by 8 divided by 2 gives me 10 pints. So the human body has approximately 10 pints of blood. Letter B says, well, how many quarts is that? Well, if I have 10 pints, I know that 2 pints is 1 quart. Again, pints on top cancel out with pints on bottom. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So you have approximately 5 quarts of blood pumping through you at this moment. That's pretty exciting. Now number four kind of builds on that. When the average adult human gives one pint of blood, because that's what they take when you give blood, what's the ratio of blood being donated? So ratio donated to the total amount of blood in your body. Well, if you give one pint, you have, from this past question over here, you have ten pints. That means the ratio pints cancel out, is 1 to 10. And because the, the uh, units are the same, that's why we can cancel them out. Number five. According to the American Red Cross, it takes 86,400 seconds for the body to replace the volume of blood donated. How many hours is this? So we start with what we're given, 86,400 seconds, and we want to go to hours. Well, I don't know how many hours are in, or seconds are in an hour, but I know there are 60 seconds in one minute, right? Seconds on the top cancels out with seconds on the bottom. And then I know there are 60 minutes in one hour. Uh, minutes cancels out with minutes. And now I have the label of hours, which is what I want. So 86,400 divided by 60 divided by 60 gives me 24 hours. So if you give blood... Uh, it'll take you approximately 24 hours to replace the blood that you lost in that donation. 
All right, um, now we're going to go to the metrics. So that was uh, U.S. conversions. Now we're going to do some metric problems. Mr. Ivy takes an 80-milligram baby aspirin every day. How many grams of aspirin does he take in a year? Okay, so a couple things here. We've got 80 milligrams every day going to grams for, per year. Okay, so the first thing that I'm thinking is I need to take 80 milligrams and turn that into grams. Well, if you go to your um, metric system, uh, you're going to notice that to go from milligrams to grams, we're going to move our decimal left three places. So if my decimal's here, I'm going to go one, two, three, and that means Mr. Ivy uses 0 .08 grams per day. Now, when I see the word per, that's like a division sign. So 0 .08 grams in one day. Well, I want to know about a year. Okay, well, there are 365 days in one year. So that would make the days cancel out. And if I take 0 .08 times 365, I'm left with 29.2 grams per year. So there's a couple different things in that one, right? We've got to go milligrams to grams, and then that's per day, 365 days in a year. We assume a normal year and not a leap year. Someone who weighs 62 kilograms weighs how many grams? Okay, so we're starting with kilograms. We're moving to grams. If you look at your chart, one, two, three, we're going to move it right three places. So if I have 62 and there's my decimal point, one, two, three, zeros in your humps, we're going to have 62,000 grams by the count method. The fastest racehorse ever recorded ran 70.76 kilometers per hour. Remember, per is the division sign. How many meters per hour? So we want meters per hour. Well, the nice thing is your hours are going to stay. We just need to change from kilometers to meters. So if you think about your chart, kilometers to meters, to go from here to here, we are going to move right three places. So I take my 70.76 and go 1, 2, 3, and that means we have 70,760 meters per hour. Now we're going to go between systems. So we're going to go U.S. customary to metric, do kind of a hop across the pond thing for a couple problems. One of the tallest female basketball players in the country right now is 6 feet 9 inches in height. How many centimeters is she? Well, if you recall from the conversion sheet, we know that 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. So what we really need to do is change this whole thing to inches. So 6 feet... Well, one foot is 12 inches, so that's going to give me 72 inches plus the extra nine. This basketball player is 81 inches tall. I don't know about you, but that seems tall. So, well, 6'9 is tall. So we have 81 inches, and I know based off of this that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So when I do that, that makes my inches go away. I multiply across the top, and this tall basketball player is 205.74 centimeters. Right? A lot taller than James Madison, the president, right, from a previous video. Boop, boop. Number two, if you purchase a loaf of artisan bread from the bakery weighing 700 grams, how many ounces is that? Well, if you look at your conversion sheet, you will see that one ounce is 28.3495 grams. Well, what do we start with? We're starting with 700 grams. So in my conversion piece, I have 700 grams. And if I want to get rid of grams, it's got to go in the opposite spot. So the 28.3495 is going to go in the denominator. The one ounce will go in the top. So grams on the top cancels out with grams on the bottom. Because the 28 and changes on the bottom, we're going to divide. 700 divided by that. And I end up with 24.69 ounces. And the last one for this video, a drink cooler used for sporting events holds three gallons. How many liters is this? Okay, well we're going across the pond, right? Gallons to liters. If you look at your cheat sheet, we know that one quart is the same as 0.9464 liters. You might think, it, you know, well Becky, that's great but I have gallons. Well, yeah, you do, but you also know that gallons can be changed to quarts. So one gallon 
is 4 quarts. So that conversion right there makes your gallons go away. Then you can use the 1 quart is 0.9464 liters. Don't lose your decimal like I almost did there. So that makes my quarts go away. Now I'm in liters just like my problem asks. So I uh, multiply across the top. And I have 11.3568 liters. And you could round that uh, if, you, if you like. But hopefully they, that was some good practice on the three different types of conversions we did in this section.